G'day folks. Well, it's motor time again. Oh, I've got a new bearing for it. Uh, it's about $16. It's not too bad. Uh, the other bearing in there is new old stock which I had on the shelf. That's good to go. Um, you'll see a video on this odd looking motor a bit later on. I've given it a clean. I've actually shot the video. I'm just going to get around to uploading it. But for now I just thought I'd finish this thing off and test it. Uh, we'll also have a play around with this old VLT drive. I don't think it's 240 volt input, but it'd be nice if it is. Um, slightly bigger drive, I think it's about a 4 kilowatt drive. Um, if it's only 3 phase input, the least I could do is run it on 3 phase at the scrapyard. But apparently it's faulty, so we'll look at repairing it. Um, for now, I'm going to unpackage this little bearing and uh, fit her up. Okay, bearings on. Should have done a video on exactly how to fit one on a tight shaft. I've actually had a couple of people comment on my motor rebuild videos asking about fitting bearings on shafts where they don't just slide straight on by hand. Well, basically you take something which fits over the shaft but only bears upon the inner race. This one's a little bit loose but still no danger of crushing the metal seal or the outer race and you drive it on. In this case I stuck the shaft through the hole in the table and struck the end of the shaft with a nylon hammer and it pushed the race on no damage to the race whatsoever. Don't use brittle or easily chippable metals avoid using brass when tapping bearings on and off because you get little splinters and things coming off into the bearing race and it can ruin it. But just a nice steel sleeve, little motors, you can pretty much use a, a large socket like a spark plug socket just as long as it only bears upon that inner race which is attached to the shaft. Do not strike the outer race or you'll pit it. You could crack it, chip it and just make a lumpy noisy bearing. So basically you'll scrap your new bearing by striking it improperly. The stator on this is nice and clean, there's no rust inside it, it hasn't had moisture get into it. So I'm not even going to bother doing anything to it. Just clean the dust and shit out of the bottom and that's it, it's ready to go. The other end housing siliconed on and ready to go. This one here, I'm just going to put a fine bead of silicon around the outside after cleaning the remaining old stuff off. If need be I can put a V seal over the shaft afterwards and seal the input shaft or sorry the output shaft and restore its IP56 moisture proofing rating. Same with the uh, electrical box that has to be 100% sealed you need a sealed conduit and you can pretty much restore its water and dust proofing rating which in this case I think it's IP56 or something it's got it on there yeah IP56 I think 5 is dust proofing, 6 is moisture proofing or vice versa. It's, a, it's just a rating system. It's like the uh, switched power outlets, clipsal power outlets, that sort of thing. They're all rated in various ways according to dust and moisture proofing. Yeah, it's like these things here, these are IP56 outlets. Um, again that rating only applies if you keep things sealed up like someone's removed something there but they've done a reasonable job of sealing it up um, all the gaskets must be intact you got to use proper glands like that one there that's a little bit loose so that's voided the rating as it is the glands way too big for the cable going in um, yeah this thing kind of violates regulations in a few ways in a sense that you can take a 10 amp plug and split it into four outlets but yeah I've no intention of using this as it is. I'm going to split it up. I'll uh, probably keep these intact and run a bigger cable to them and separate that one and just attach it to a board with the VFD or one of the VFDs. The whole lot only cost me a hundred bucks. It's not bad. It's probably over a grand worth of outlets and shit. But that's all water and weatherproof if you install it properly. Same with motors, you've got to seal them and clean them up properly. Okay, well, I just did a quick jog test with the uh, T1 
TK VFD and unfortunately I think my new bearing well new old stock bearing has rocks in it worked okay for a minute and it's just suddenly become rather lumpy and grindy new ones just perfect but there's funny rocky noises coming from the back end from this one so yeah it might have been new but yeah time to get another one it's only another sixteen dollars and these motors are worth two three hundred dollars each so it's well worth it ran up fine though sounded good until the bearing went to the shit <laughs> yeah the stator's in very good condition nice high frequency squeal as it started up or you hear the frequency oscillation inside it I'll have to uh, try this stator down here one day I'll do for a motor blow up session there's one there, there's that one, there's about six different motors and other things which need to be sold as scrap metal but first we'll uh, let some magic smoke out of them even try filling that stator up with ball bearings and then crank it up on the uh, VFD we'll see if they achieve some rotation that's all for now I'll uh, go shopping tomorrow there we go that's how you remove the uh, lumpy old bearing I'm pretty sure I heard something fracture I think I've actually cracked the outer race yeah, it looks like there's a crack in the outer shell yeah that bearing ain't going to work again. Even the top side seal's starting to try and escape. Well, oh, I'm going to need two hands for this job. And yes, they are tight. step there. It's very tight. That washer has to stay there. That's the old one. What's left of it. Oh well. Don't trust new old stock bearings. Especially if they look like they've been sitting around since the 1970s. I mean that's a fairly old bearing. It was inside cardboard but not plastic wrap. And it ran pretty smooth, but yeah, it ain't smooth now. It's sort of smooth. It doesn't feel rocky till you load it up or get it spinning real fast. So yeah, just buy new ones. Buy NSK or NTN bearings. Don't buy cheap Chinese shit. They always flog out after a couple of months. Never ever use counterfeit bearings on wheel axles or trailers or anything like that because if they seize up and shatter you're in real big trouble counterfeit bearings are a major problem and yeah often enough lives depend on it so buy good quality bearings okay got another new bearing in they gave me an NTN one this time but they're all good quality bearings um, mind the rain noise in the background it's going to be doing that all day so uh, let's crank her up again Hang on, might help push start. That's better. No rocky sound. <laughs> of course, make sure everything's well grounded and your phase wires don't touch. I won't run it up too high for now, I'll let it idle. Just run the new bearings in and the grease into them. A slight vibration at 30 hertz. 35 it goes away. Just got to find a fan for it and put the cowl back on. I'll let that idle for about 15-20 minutes and just run the bearings in. And metal halide still works a treat. Boot it up for once on the nice icy cold day. Takes a while to warm up though. <laughs> it's taken ages to warm up. Okay. 
think we've idled long enough. Take it up to 100 hertz. There we go. Very nice. Still stone cold after 20 minutes, but it's not under any load. About 50 hertz. It's rated to 1420 RPM, so it's a four pole motor. Let's try a reverse. I think it's actually supposed to be going clockwise shaft end in forwards. So I've got L1 and L2 swapped around the wrong way. But that's easy fix. You just swap the first and third phase, not L2. You don't swap L2. Well, that's that. It works. Let's put the uh, end housing back on for now and just keep it aside. It's not going through extreme duty work, so I mean it's not not even going to get warm. But I'll put a fan on it when I find one. Thanks for watching.